space is the final frontier. Also, a frontier that doesn't nearly have enough games about it when it comes to being a privateer. Thankfully, Switch owners have been lucky to get No Man's Sky and Rebel Galaxy Outlaw to fill that black hole of space trading and swashbuckling they so desire. And this game reviewer himself has spent hundreds of hours exploring the vast galaxies in handheld mode. With that being said, is there room for another game to try and take your attention away and draw it to their own stars? Well, coming out of the warp gate is Darkstar 1, an open galaxy trading and combat sim with the DNA of X Gold and Elite Dangerous at its core. What's it like? Prime the warp drive, prepare the shields, and hold on tight as we review Darkstar 1 for the Nintendo Switch. Before we blast off into the stars, would you mind liking and subscribing? It's the best way that What's It Like can get found on YouTube, and I can't thank you enough for your support. I hope you enjoy the video. Darkstar 1 was initially released in 2006 on PC and Xbox 360, and it has had somewhat of a cult following. It follows a fledgling space pirate, Kron, after he inherits a ship from his father who recently passed, called the Darkstar 1. Kron will meet and fight alongside a range of characters from a plucky femme fatale, grizzled alien veterans and scientists to uncover the mystery of his father's death as well as the mystery of your ship. The epic space opera story gripped me within the first hour of the game and helps Darkstar 1 stand out by giving me a lead to chase here and there, helping me stay on target instead of getting lost in one of the 300 systems in the game. While the story is exciting with many twists and turns as well as unexpected set pieces here and there, the double-edged light sword is that the voice acting is fairly wooden at times, and despite having exciting, cinematic and albeit dated cutscenes, a lot of key moments are delivered by flat voice acting that takes some of that shine away. Hmm, as far as I'm concerned right now, you can access the missions from the terminals. Hey, but you know how that works. And don't scratch the paint, you hear? I'll try my best. Granted, this game is almost 20 years old and I did eventually get used to it. And while the voice acting may be flat at times, the gameplay certainly isn't and this is where Darkstar 1 shines. Combat is visceral and exciting with close quarters dogfighting and minor systems management to help keep your hull integrity in place. Combat is just genuinely exhilarating, performing sharp turns or hitting the reverse thrusters to protect your rear shields. The game doesn't pitch and roll like most space fighters, instead allows you to strafe and shift to mix up the combat. There's combat chatter while you fight and you can open comms to enemies to taunt them. Enemies will also react to you taking out their leaders, which is a really nice touch, and on several occasions I found myself tangling with gangs that were out for retribution waiting for me at the warp gate when coming back from a successful hunting mission. The intuitive control system will have you targeting, matching speed with targets, and switching between systems in no time, and it makes victory feel hard earned and accomplished. The game's mission structure is broken up into the main story, side quest, which usually allow you to obtain travel keys, more on this later, and terminal quests, which come down to sabotage, mercenary missions, or bounty hunting. These terminal missions did tend to get a bit repetitive early on when grinding for credits, but thankfully due to the progression system, it's very rare that you'll have to grind too many missions for upgrades unless you want to be well ahead of the curve. You can also forego all of that and just be a space pirate if you wish, but your reputation does shape the galaxy around you, so be sure to think about your consequences before you open fire. Travel is handled on a galaxy map and you need keys to access warp gates. Travelling to new sectors will unlock some warp gates that will allow you to find side quests, like liberating a pirate controlled system or protecting frigates in space battles. There are also plenty of random encounters that don't outstay their welcome when you jump to a new system, making things exciting. Most of these missions are required to get more keys, including access to systems that have powerful artifacts. And there are 300 systems in all, and they are broken up into smaller consumable sectors, which are marked with what systems hold these artifacts, helping you plan out your jumps to upgrade your ship, instead of looking for a needle in a haystack. 
This leads to another standout mechanic that sets Darkstar 1 aside because these artifacts that you hunt not only upgrade your ship's function but its look and feel too as the Darkstar is almost an organic ship that evolves depending on your playstyle. You can upgrade your hull, your wings, your engine and each upgrade has to be a calculated one depending on your playstyle. Do you pick another set of hard points for your wings or do you need better engines to sustain your current loadout? You can upgrade your capacitors and power banks at space stations to help you compensate should you make a mistake, but ultimately, your choices of upgrades are constantly in the front of your mind when planning it out. These upgrades also come with the powerful plasma cannon unlocks that allow you to overcharge your weapons or shields and eventually launch a time stop force field or overpower ships, which becomes essential later in game in order to help turn the tide against overwhelming odds. While the gameplay and mechanics still hold up to this day, there is no denying that Darkstar 1 looks dated in many areas. I did find myself fully immersed while out in space and in the midst of combat, but there's no denying that the space stations and certain elements of the graphic engine may not have stood the test of time. That being said, while I do appreciate amazing visuals from time to time, it very much felt to me that it was similar to revisiting Knights of the Old Republic or the Jedi Knight series on Switch recently, while dated, it was just incredibly fun. Performance wise, the game runs at a liquid smooth frame rate at around 60 frames per second mark, making it a very smooth experience, and it's well polished. I only experienced one bug in my 20 plus hours with the game, and that was when I tried warping during a cutscene in the first hour of the game, and it just made my UI disappear. I wasn't able to replicate it, and I didn't have a problem after that. For my vision impaired space explorers, there are no accessibility options, so further research may be required to find out if Darkstar 1 is for you. There is a handy hit indicator noise when hitting shields uh, and hulls that pings which may assist you in tracking, and for those who don't like audio cues, these can be turned off in the options menu. At $45 Australian, there's a lot of gameplay here and an epic adventure to be had in Darkstar 1. Even blitzing through the main story could take you up to 30 hours while ignoring terminal and optional side quests. But for me, I was so eager to explore every system and get every artifact to make my ship the most powerful one in the galaxy. As we near the end of this journey, Darkstar 1 is an incredibly fun and exciting game driven by a gripping narrative with many twists and turns. There are a few dated elements like the wooden voice acting and a 20 year old graphics engine, but even time can't dull the shine of Darkstar 1. While with its unique mechanics like the living ship that changes every time you play, intuitive controls and visceral combat, Darkstar 1 is a fantastic game at a great price point that will be sure to entertain pilots waiting at the spaceport for their next adventure. So, what's it like? Darkstar 1 is like Elite Dangerous, crossed with X-Wing vs TIE Fighter. I award it a 78 out of 100. In the interest of full disclosure, a review copy was provided by Calypso Media, but this does not affect my score. Thanks so much for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. The best way you can support me is to like and subscribe and continue watching my content if you enjoy it. But if you do want to go that bit extra, you can buy me a coffee or join our Patreon which shows you behind the scenes of this channel. Thanks again.